Good evening and welcome to the Pimlico Experience. I'm Joel Buchholz, Executive Principal at Pimlico State High School. It's my great pleasure to welcome you and I hope that you find our ongoing Pimlico Experience a worthwhile and invaluable opportunity to learn more about our school and the great opportunities that we're able to provide students and families in our Pimlico community. I'm going to hand you over now to our students for this evening's tour. Welcome to Pimlico State High School and the virtual Pimlico experience. My name is Damien. And my name is Jessica. And we're in Year 7 here at Pimlico State High School. Today we are going on a virtual journey through our STEM program and we'll highlight the opportunities available to students. Come with us and discover how a Pimlico education really does make a world of difference. Let's show you around. The acronym STEM refers to Science, Technology, Engineering, Mathematics. STEM is a really important area for students to build up skills that will allow them to actually deal with real world problems. It will also allow students to have access to emerging future industries. At Pimlico we offer a vast array of STEM related curriculum subjects. We also have a number of innovative extracurricular activities for our students in the Science and the STEM Club, the Solar Powered Bike Project, and we actively encourage our students to get involved in a large number of STEM competitions, programs and camps that are available. Our weekly Science Club promotes critical thinking, problem solving and academic engagement through fun, hands-on STEM related activities. It's offered uh, during our lunch breaks, once a week, and open to all of our students year 7 through 12. A lot of the activities we share come directly from the interests of the student group, giving the students the opportunity to undertake the learning of STEM beyond what we would normally see in the classroom. This has led to everything from making and testing rockets, exploring static electricity, investigating magnetism and some exciting chemistry that they would not normally see. We also give our students the opportunity to run the sessions and share their knowledge, and interest with their peers. This has been done through simple presentations, discussions, facilitated practical activities and demonstrations. Uh, the project group offers participating students the opportunity to sink their teeth into extended STEM related projects. It offers the members a designated time to complete projects of their choosing and allows for the access to a dedicated facilitator, materials, space and a collaborative team used to assist in project completion. What I enjoy most about STEM at Pimlico is the amount of topics that it covers. So in math, I'm learning the basic mathematical justifications behind everything. And in biology, I'm learning about the human body and how it works. And that's really helpful for what I want to do in the future. I think it will help me because I will understand the basics behind the human body, especially in biology. And the career that I want to pursue after high school is all about the human body. So I think it's really helpful that I'll learn the basics behind it. I've had so many opportunities here at Pimlico through the STEM fields, uh, through the QUT STEM camp, through access to STEM competitions and opportunities to develop my projects. Um, Pimlico has been a fantastic environment to develop my STEM skills. There's such a supporting environment, there's fantastic mentoring and it's overall a fantastic program. With STEM I have done many extracurricular activities like chemistry quizzes, um, general knowledge quizzes. I've actually been a STEM ambassador. Last year I went to Brisbane for a STEM camp. Um, as part of that I got to meet with other like-minded people. There was about 60 of us chosen across Queensland. We all went to Brisbane, met up together. We got to go to all these universities, experience all the types of careers we could potentially do in STEM and then we got to come back to our own schools and try and implement that into the school. So now we've got a science club, we've got a STEM club after school. Yeah, hopefully it continues into the future. Through being part of the STEM club, I have learnt most how important it is to enjoy science and to do sciences that you personally love and how to do that and facilitate that in a friendly and helpful environment. I like most about Pimlico High School that no matter what your interests are, your abilities or who you are, they're always so supportive and willing to provide you with multiple opportunities so that you can have the best time at school possible. Whether it's through STEM or it's through the arts or it's through, like, through teachers or anything, it's amazing the amount of opportunities that the students get. 
So Pimlico, there's uh, something for everyone, whether it's STEM or whether it's in other fields, there's always something to participate in and get involved in. Um, within the STEM, there's so many opportunities and fantastic support to follow what interests you. That's certainly what I love about Pimlico. Thank you for joining us on this virtual journey through our STEM programs and giving us the opportunity to showcase our school, students, teachers and programs. A Pimlico education really does make a world of difference. Please stay tuned for our Q&A session coming up next. We'll be online to have a chat and answer for any of your questions about our school. Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the second of our Pimlico Experience virtual tours and interactive sessions. It's great to have you with us again. Thanks to this evening's tour guides, Damien and Jessica. As you saw this week in National Science Week, they just took you for a tour through some of our STEM programs here at Pimlico High. Joining me this evening, I've got our Head of Department for Science, Don Gallatly, our STEM Coordinator, Clayton Jay, uh, one of our alumni, a student from 2019, Erin McConnell, and two of our current students, Naomi and Kailash. Welcome. So uh, Donna, talk to us about what, what STEM curriculum will students in Year 7 engage with? Okay, so in Year 7, all students will do Maths, Science, um, Digital Solutions and ITD. Excellent. Obviously, as students progress through school, they start to specialise then. So by the time they're at Year 11 and 12, what are some of the STEM offerings available to students then? Okay. So all of our students will do maths right through to Year 12. Um, year 10 for science, and then it, they can actually choose quite a few offerings there, biology, chemistry, physics, um, health, or science and practice. Um, digital technologies becomes uh, elective from Grade 9 and ITD, again, from Year 9 through to Year 12. Excellent. So, Naomi, tell us about some of the STEM subjects that you're undertaking as part of yeah. your studies. So, I currently I'm doing four STEM subjects. I'm doing uh, a math, a aquatics, practices, which is an applied subject, biology and chemistry. Excellent. And where are you hoping that, that your science studies are going to take you into the yeah. future? So, I'm hoping to go and do a double degree of engineering and science at either UQ or Monash in the future. Excellent. And Kailash, talk to us about your, uh, your STEM involvement. Well, by the end of grade 10, I had pretty much come to terms with the fact that science was probably going to be my entire life. <laughs> so I'm doing physics, chemistry, specialist math, and mathematical methods, which personally for me, I love every single one of them. I love the science, like the scientific method and learning how to calculate things, conduct experiments, and solve problems. And I've even come to the terms that I'm probably just going to have to do a general Bachelor of Science at UQ when I go into university just because I cannot decide which science field to go into because there's just so many amazing sciences Too many out options. there. <laughs> That's it. So Erin, obviously you've had to make that choice. You're studying now. Tell us about what you're studying. Uh, I'm in my first year of a Bachelor of Medicine and Bachelor of Surgery at JCU. So that's really exciting. And going into uni, I wasn't really sure what to do because I have lots of interests ranging from like art to maths but um, at Pimlico I had a really great time doing science and all the activities I got to do related to STEM here so I thought why not do that for the rest of my life so <laughs> <laughs> and look, we heard obviously from the students in the video earlier about how many of them had a passion and interest in in STEM but were also involved in a whole range of other aspects of the school too and I mean the same was true for you yeah, so I was really into the arts and I was, um, so I was a part of Pimlico Presents, I was a part of Artscape, uh, I also did a lot of public speaking and then in terms of the science things I was a part of the uh, JCU three minute thesis competition where we got to give a thesis on a topic of our choice but it had to be in three minutes so that was like sort of combined public speaking and science and then oh, I also enjoyed doing Japanese here at Pimlico <laughs> and that also combined with STEM because I got to go to Japan for a STEM tour so that was great. <laughs> Fantastic and obviously you've all touched them not only on your curriculum studies but also some of the extracurricular things you've been involved in in STEM as well so Clayton talk to us about some of the extracurricular opportunities for yeah. students in STEM. Yeah so we provide many extracurricular activities um, in, in the field of STEM so uh, countless one-off activities that happen throughout the year 
which we uh, usually advertise through external agencies, so different organisations, universities, that kind of thing. Uh, might be um, different events or camps, um, uh, challenges and, and projects. Uh, we will advertise them uh, throughout the year whenever they pop up and facilitate them in, in uh, any way that we need to. And two of the, the regular activities, obviously, that we heard some of the students talk about were both the Science Club and then also the STEM Club as well. So what, what are they involved? Yeah, so we have two distinct um, weekly opportunities to get involved in. So there's the Science Club uh, is offered through um, our lunch break, so we meet once a week. Uh, sole purpose is to um, just build enthusiasm around science. So it's always fun. Uh, it's driven uh, by the focus of our, our members. So whatever the students are interested in, that's what we, we look at in the, um, in the meeting. So one meeting from one week to the next will always be different. Um, we've done some pretty crazy things because of that. You know, everything from um, uh, some of our students talking quantum physics uh, because that's what they're interested in um, and teaching some of our juniors uh, uh, some of those uh, concepts a little bit beyond uh, what even we learn at school, which was, was great. Um, lots of hands-on activities in terms of uh, experimentation. We do engineering challenges. Um, yeah. You name it. Yeah. And um, then the STEM clubs, that's an after school program. Yeah, the STEM club's a little bit more formal, so uh, a longer session after schools uh, where participating members have a, a time and place to, to work on projects that are a little bit um, longer in duration, so uh, weeks long, cross terms, that kind of thing. And we uh, really just supply a place for the collaboration of groups. Um, and the, the materials, the technology, and a facilitator to help them complete those projects. Excellent. Yeah. And uh, Naomi and Kyle, you guys have both been involved in some of those extracurricular opportunities. Tell us about what you've enjoyed from the science or STEM clubs. Uh, the extracurricular activities that have been run through STEM are probably some of the most exciting and challenging aspects of STEM in my high school career. I've actually just come from working on my OptiMind Science Engineering Challenge with a, bunch, with a bunch of my friends. We've been working together to make this really complicated machine <laughs> for about three weeks now, and on Sunday we have to present it and say why it's going to do the job that it was designed to do, and what it's really testing us on is just our ability to work together and work as a team and share our ideas and then implement them in a practical way, and that's honestly what one of the main reasons I love science and STEM because it's also implementing teamwork. Like one discovery in science is not usually one individual's work. It's usually a collaborative effort from lots of different people. And I think there's seven people yeah. in this team. So we've got so many different minds working together to come up with this solution to a problem. And yeah, I really love STEM activities like that. <laughs> and maybe you've been pretty heavily involved in some of the, the STEM yeah. and science club too. So I've done a lot of extracurriculars. <laughs> One of my favorites was the year nine and 10 science engineering challenge. We went over to JCU and we managed to do uh, catapults. So we designed and built catapults out of rubber bands and bamboo. And my team went a little bit off the wire and decided to make a slingshot instead. <laughs> but it, it was really interesting to see how most groups followed the norm and we just went a little off the norm. Um, <laughs> we did end up getting, I think, second overall in our category with yeah, our slingshot. Well, a bit of room for creativity yes, still in STEM, yes. that's it. Look, one of the uh, the, the uh, projects we saw some footage of earlier as well during the tour was around the, uh, the solar-powered electric bike uh, project. Clayton, tell us a little bit about that one. Yeah, so from time to time, um, there'll be in-house activities come up in Pimlico, so it might be uh, different challenges put out from different groups or teachers. Uh, the, the solar bike is a good example of that. That was one of our ITD teachers' um, uh, design. Uh, they brought together a group of Year 11 students to produce a, a solar bike, but um, anticipating possibly uh, taking that, uh, that uh, project, I guess, into a competition um, uh, seen in the future, so against other schools and that kind of thing. So that's pretty exciting, uh, exciting stuff. Yeah. Indeed. Now, uh, Donna, Pimlico is also part of the Queensland Minerals and Energy Academy, which provides opportunities for our students in, in, in the, uh, the, the mining and energy sector. Talk to us about some of those opportunities that students have. We've just had two girls involved in a mentoring, mentoring program with them. So they've actually had six months where they were partnered up with a, a female who's in a job in that area so that they can actually talk to them and get it get knowledge and ask some questions that they've always wanted to do. So that's just finished. 
Um, next week, we've got our Year 10s are involved in QMEA Unearthed, and they're going through a number of hands-on activities to give them an idea of what's involved in the industry. Excellent. One of the questions that we've had uh, coming through uh, online is asking about what we're going to be doing in mathematics. So, um, Donna, can you talk to maybe uh, in terms of the Year 7 curriculum, what are some of the, the, maybe the topics or units that students might be doing in maths or science in that first year? Okay, so generally um, we're doing the junior curriculum that's prescribed to us, but that's algebra and geometry and the, the normal um, fractions, decimals, integers, etc. And in science, students undertake a, a unit each term around a, a, different, a different science discipline? Yes, so in each year level, 7 to 10, they do one chemistry, one biology, one physics and one earth science topic. Excellent. So, of course, as we, uh, as we uh, sit here and talk with you, we're in the middle of National Science Week. There's lots of great things happening around the country, but there's been some activities happening here at Pimlico as well. So, Clayton, what's been going on for Science Week at Pimlico High? Yeah, okay. So, every year we um, like to put on activities through the entire week, um, different sessions on every day uh, to match the theme of that year's uh, Science Week. This year it's all about the oceans and innovation in the ocean. Um, so we've had chemistry, physic, uh, physics and biology sessions, um, all with that focus, so things around uh, ocean acidification, we've done um, anatomy of some underwater creatures, which is quite popular, you might have seen in the video, <laughs> um, and uh, some physics around buoyancy was, was run today, so they were in, in uh, morning tea sessions. Uh, we've also had uh, some guest speakers in from JCU and Grumpa uh, talking about STEM pathways, specifically in marine sciences, but um, opening it up uh, to a, a, a greater STEM theme. Um, and they're going to be back tomorrow, in fact, to have a look at some more marine science, hands-on uh, touch tanks. I'm looking forward to it. Not sure exactly what it's going to look <laughs> like, but it sounds pretty good. Uh, so lots of uh, the interactive sessions, all informative, all in, engaging, um, and we're also running a couple of activities through care class, things like the um, uh, Science Trivia Challenge, uh, which we run yearly, um, and we've got a new addition this year with the, uh, the Palm Plaque, uh, the Interhouse, uh, I don't know, Academic Carnival, I suppose, <laughs> um, and we're doing a, a, a science-related trivia challenge uh, Friday as well, it's round off the week. Fantastic. So look, obviously right from year seven, students have got the opportunity to get involved in these activities. So we've got students you know, in, in, our, uh, in our lunchtime club and obviously through the, the science and maths curriculum. One of the other uh, components of the curriculum though is around digital solutions. Obviously the use of uh, information technology is a critical part of how we're preparing students for the future. What are some of the things that students from year seven are studying as part of their digital technology studies? So in year seven, they're mainly looking at how a network operates and then starting to learn basic language and then in year eight they go into more detail so they start with um, a visual type of programming like um, scratch and then in grade eight they actually progress on to a language such as python Excellent. So what uh, experience a lot of our primary school uh, students have had, as we, we see Stacey's just talked about that uh, as well, uh, in relation to coding and robotics. So obviously some of the work in digital solutions links in around that programming and coding. Yep. Are there other opportunities through some of the extracurricular activities or the clubs around robotics and coding as well? Uh, yes. So, <clears throat> excuse me again, um, The uh, we've had a few external agencies provide challenges and quite extensive ones across the year. Uh, there was a big uptake with the Australian Video, video Game Challenge, um, which we had a, a number of students involved in. Unfortunately, it did get uh, cancelled this year, but um, there are still groups building uh, their video game for submission next year, and uh, they, they, what I've seen, pretty impressive stuff, I'll put it out yeah. there. So lots of ongoing regular uh, extracurricular activities through the year for students that want to explore more into that space around the robotics and coding. Yeah, that's Excellent. right. And um, just to add to that as well, uh, we've seen uh, with our year sevens in digital technologies, um, the skills that they're taking from primary school in, in some of the basic coding they've now been able to work on um, during the, the digital, digital tech classes. Um, and we were able to stretch them a little bit further to, you know, and, and again, I'm, I'm seeing very impressive um, skills, coming, skills coming out of our junior um, school in terms of 
of that, you know, push towards coding and the like, something that um, is, is developed heavily over the last few years. I've seen major change, so it's great. Excellent. Mm -hmm. So, as, as a student who's undertaken a range of studies in STEM and is now pursuing a, a career that's obviously very, very STEM focused, what would be your advice to, to a, a young year six student heading into year seven that's maybe starting to realise they've got a passion and interest around STEM? Mm -hmm. Uh, my advice would be get involved in as many STEM things as you can um, because you get to meet a whole bunch of people and you get to learn new skills and you also get to explore your passions with STEM. So then when you realise you like it, then you can also, like, you can use the connections that you find there to, like, explore future careers. So. Yeah, Excellent. definitely just get involved. Get involved with certainly lots of opportunities. So uh, one of the other questions we've got coming through from Paul is in relation to uh, extension uh, maths activities. So certainly, uh, Donna, you know, there's opportunities for students to connect in, but we also do, uh, from time to time, provide opportunities for students to accelerate or extend in terms of, uh, of, of maths particularly. Yes. So I know our maths department has um, linked the kids on to our online. I think it's called iXL and students can work at their own pace and do extra work that way. And I know um, every year they offer maths competitions, the Australian maths competitions, and there's maths camps that are available. So there's definitely those extracurricular activities for students. And then of course, as students progress through up into the middle years, into year nine and year 10 in particular, mm -hmm. Then there's opportunities to, to go into, into further formalised extension as extension students get prepared classes. for yep. senior. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So ladies and gentlemen, it's been great to talk with you about STEM this evening. Thank you so much for, for joining us. It's been great to see some of the questions coming through. Thank you again to all of our panel for joining us, some, uh, some great ambassadors for, for science and for technology. Uh, as we did last week, we've got a, a challenge though for some of our students who might be watching, uh, watching at home. So I'm going to throw over to, to, to Mr. Mr. Jay again to tell us about this week's interactive activity for STEM. <laughs> Yes, we have a STEM-tastic challenge for all of our Year 6 students out there. Um, we're giving you the challenge to build, from a template that will provide, a paper helicopter, uh, which you can then go and investigate how the changing length of rotor blades um, affect the flight time. Um, you can collect your data, form some conclusions, take a picture of your work and send it on in um, as part of our competition. So just this little fella there. May I? <laughs> Hey, that's all right. <laughs> Not too bad at all. Excellent. Thank you. Look, thank you to our panel. Thanks for joining us. We'll be back again at the same time next week for the third in our series of the Pimlico Experience. Uh, our third session next week will be focused around our global education and languages programs. So join us as you find out about how our students are connecting with and learning with other young people right around the world as part of their studies here at Pimlico. All the best for the rest of National Science Week. Remember that our videos from this week and last week will be uploaded to our website, as well as information about the interactive activities and other resources to tell you more about Pimlico High. Thanks and good evening. <laughs>